I spent 10 plus years working in the Caribbean with advocates trying to address this issue. And 99% of those people were volunteers. There is no money. With all the billions available for AIDS alone, there is no money to support the work that we all know needs to be done. The idea is that somehow, as community members who are invested in change, we're supposed to do it for free or find a job and volunteer on the side, and that's how things should happen, and that's appropriate. We'll give you a box of condoms, we'll give you a peer education workshop, and that's how you're going to move forward. That has got to stop. We have got to let it be known in this conference over the next coming week that that is bullshit that the resources ha that are there have to be found and have to be applied to what we already know is works. As in the Caribbean, we talk about spinning a top in mud. We have got to stop letting people give us the short end of the stick. We have to confront them. We have to say enough is enough. And we have to hold the institutions, the donor institutions, the bilateral institutions, the UN, to account about whether or not all of this money and all of this effort and all of this rhetoric about human rights is actually making a difference for communities on the ground in the countries where the epidemic is raging. Okay. So, thank you. My last point. So I want to just end with a story that I find very inspirational. Um, some of you may know about the work that's been going on in Jamaica for the past, well, 10 years plus. But about six years ago, some of you may have heard about the campaign against homophobic music. And you may also have heard about the Human Rights Watch report. That was the beginning of a struggle to end the complicity of silence around the brutality and, the, and the, the, the driving out of homes of gay men across Jamaica. People had to do it in silence. People had to hide and do it. The only person who actually was permanently employed or fully employed to do this had to have a fake name because it was so dangerous that we could not allow that person's identity to become known. Six years later, what this picture shows is that JFLAG, the Jamaica Forum for Lesbians, All Sexuals, and Gays, with the support of AIDS Free World, was able to hold a public demonstration in partnership with human rights organizations, in partnership with members of the media on the other side of those placards, holding those placards, and with other partners in a coalition to stand up in rush hour traffic on a weekday morning and say that gay people in Jamaica are here, that they are part of the nation and the national dialogue, and they have a right to speak out and to do so in public. Now, I am thrilled that a number of people in that coalition are here today, and I want to end by asking them to stand up and be acknowledged for the brilliant work that they have done over all these years. Dane, please stand up. Maurice, Tony, Ivan, Jermaine. This is a testament to what happens when we have a commitment of spirit, when we are determined at whatever cost to change the way societies think about gay people. If it can happen on the streets of Kingston, it can happen anywhere. But it has to happen with support. So one more time, enough of this bullshit, no more rhetoric, over the course of the next few days, we have got to push the people who come next week to really take action on what we all know needs to be done. Thank you very much.